Hello, uh, my name is Juan Carlos Perez, uh, and here uh, I have uh, Josh Friedman. Uh, we're both artists, and uh, what we're doing right now is we're documenting an ongoing dialogue that we've been having for a while, um, which happened to fit right with uh, this United States Latin X Art Forum um, mentorship uh, program award that we got, uh, where we uh, continue or create a dialogue myself and another, another artist uh, and um, and create or continue a conversation based on our art process and methods based on where we are in our lives right now. Uh, very free form. Uh, it can involve uh, part of art processes, uh, note taking, conversations. Uh, so this is uh, documentation of that ongoing dialogue. Um, and, um, you know, uh, when I got this supposed to uh, uh, find an artist who I can uh, uh, kind of create this dialogue with. Uh, and it just so happened that Josh and I kind of connected about a year or so back uh, from my move to, from Chicago here and um, to uh, California. Uh, I lived, I grew up here in, in California. I was born in Mexico. Uh, emigrated to the States uh, at the age of four. I uh, grew up in the in the San Gabriel area, in Los Angeles area. And then eventually, uh, once I began my art practice, I moved to Chicago to study at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. And where I remained, uh, working in the neighborhoods, uh, uh, teaching traditional modern cultural, uh, rigorous arts education integration, uh, and social justice in the neighborhoods, under-resourced neighborhoods. And then I came back uh, to the Los Angeles area in 2019, moved to Long Beach. Uh, and so it was kind of this thing where I'm entering a new habitat, I guess you would say, all over again. Um, and Josh and I kind of uh, through, through, um, through uh, acquaintances kind of began uh, creating a dialogue and he's in Long Beach. And we began to talk to each other right after quarantine about we began to connect and uh, and started talking about our processes and just kind of trying to get to know each other in that sense. And so when this award, uh, this mentorship program came up, uh, then it fit just appropriately for us to really continue uh, this investigation. And that's the reason uh, when I approached him and said, are you interested in, since we're already on this dialogue and it seems to be seem to be going into it pretty pretty heavy. Let's continue this. And he agreed. So I, I thank you for that, Josh. So if you want to just introduce yourself a little bit. Thank you very much. I appreciate it for this opportunity. Um, but if I can, before I introduce myself, um, a couple words of thanks, please. I want to, uh, this is a great opportunity. Uh, both Juan Carlos and I are truly grateful uh, to the uh, U.S. Um, LAF uh, Executive Committee, uh, Mary Thomas, Adriana uh, Zelava. Um, excuse me, I apologize if I mispronounce any, anyone's names. Uh, Rose Salceda, Josh Franco, Sonia um, um, Gendert, uh, Sam Romero, and Michelle Ruiz. And of, uh, thank you very much for this, this great opportunity. And of course, my collaborator and mentor here, um, Juan Carlos Perez. Um, this has been uh, really very helpful. This process has given clarity and um, brought about some uh, pretty dramatic change over the past uh, past several months in my life. So I'm grateful for that. Um, quick introduction. My name is Josh Friedman. I'm a visual artist. Um, background in mixed media predominantly. Um, I have studied um, studied in Europe and uh, worked in Asia. I did my graduate work in ceramics at Cranbrook Academy of Art, but I feel my work is definitely uh, not bound to a particular medium, um, um, and it changes and transforms based on um, the project and uh, the place where I'm at. Um, I've been teaching up until a few weeks ago, uh, teaching for about 22 years in a range of different institutions, um, public and uh, private um, 
colleges, universities, um, and uh, primary high school, elementary schools, adults, etc. Um, here in the United States, uh, in Japan, Thailand, and um, in Italy. Um, so as, that's a brief introduction on me. Uh, did you want to? Do you want to continue now? <laughs> sure. Passing, passing the mic again, back to you. No, yeah, this is great. Uh, and again, this is free form. And yeah, uh, you know, it's uh, we're here raw, unpolished, uh, just for you, uh, the way artists do it. And so I'm very excited about that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a little bit of my page, my website page, just to give you a little bit of the kind of what my work revolves around. Uh, and um, it'll be just very brief. And then we'll, Josh will talk a little bit about his work. And and then after that, we will talk a little bit about where our dialogue, dialogue has been, in which way it's been going this past uh, few months. Uh, and then we'll and reconvene at towards uh, the end. Yes, Josh. I'm sorry to chime in. What I need to do right now, are you going to, you want to share your screen? I have to, I'm going to the, uh, click on the participant participant box mm -hmm. and um, what where then I highlight your name where it says more I click on that and I'm making you the host now okay okay so you're the you're you're the host so I'm there now, now so you can go ahead and share your screen okay and great. then when it comes time for me to share my screen you're gonna have to do the same thing you do you have your participant window open? Oh, uh, I have it. I just, uh, you know, on the uh, bottom where it says participant, please click that. And on the right hand side of your screen, it'll have your name and my name. Yes, I see it. Okay, great. So, okay. So when it comes time for you to turn the the host of the meeting over to me, you just highlight my name. Mm -hmm. where it says more, click that. And then it'll say, oh, oh, I says, I, it looks like I can reclaim the host. I'll I'll do yeah. it. Oh, whatever. Excuse me. Please continue. You're good. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Give me a second real quick. Sure. Let me see. Um, all right. How's that? Perfect. Awesome. So a little bit uh, again about my bio. This is in third person. Uh, my apologies. Uh, so I have to read my glasses here. Let me go. So again, uh, I'll just say, you know, I'm a visual artist who was born in Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico, and I immigrated to Los Angeles, California at an early age. I later went to study at the School of Art Institute of Chicago, uh, where I remained actually about 22 plus years as a studio artist, arts educator, cultural worker, uh, working traditional modern and cultural arts, uh, rigorous arts education integration, uh, research work, uh, as well as uh, teaching mural work, uh, uh, mosaic, and uh, painted. Uh, my work has taken me into, my, my personal work has taken me into, uh, to, to research in places such as uh, uh, Again, Germany, uh, West Africa, um, Detroit, uh, and all throughout Chicago. Um, my work has been uh, on view at numerous spaces and galleries throughout the United States, uh, the National Museum of Mexican Art in Chicago, and I'm also a recipient of the Three Arts Channel Award in the category Teaching Arts. Um, uh, I'm also part of the Chicago Act Collective, a group of socially and politically engaged artists that create many forms of resistance through the use of art that promote collaboration and dialogue across multiple communities that reflect and respond to current and local needs identified by those directly impacted. Uh, I'm gonna go straight into my, um, uh, to my statement. As a multidisciplinary artist, I investigate and challenge how perspectives today continue to be shaped by an old traditional past colonial rule, a European blueprint of laws that have created and normalized an American culture or narrative built to dominate or create systems of power that have led to today's social and class divides on issues such as immigration, racism, violence, religion, etc., and has historically targeted and disenfranchised communities of color. Through the use of painting, sculpture, 
installations and drawings that confront these barriers or perspectives determined to own through aggression or dominance. The same racial, social racial issues that incoming immigrants and new generations of Mexicanos and Latinx people still face today. I'm very process oriented in my art investigation through the physicality of making art. I draw parallels to my mother and her friends, laborers and immigrants. Uh, in my painting, stitches and markings of color struggle to fit in with one another, wanting to harmonize into a larger composition. The, stitch, the stitches and colors work hard to challenge, investigate, and dissect their indifferences in order to create and be a part of a larger narrative. I find similarities in my art making practice and how immigrants or disenfran disenfranchised individuals today struggle to fit into a larger equation of this country. As an arts educator, I work with neighborhoods throughout the United States of America, deconstructing the many nuances that feed into systemic racism and narratives constructed to place worth on people of color. It is through the opening of this dialogue that we are able to engage in discussions of the consistent undercurrent racism evident in American history for hundreds of years that have led to a relationship of mistrust in our communities. These dialogues and conversations feed into my studio art making practice, color constantly bringing its value to light and fighting to make it's worth visible in a society or landscape constant, constantly trying to take it away. Uh, and so I'm just going to show a few images of uh, some of my recent work. Um, and these actually stem from, uh, I'm going to show the most, some of the most recent ones from uh, the my residency uh, the labor program uh, that I was in uh, at, the, um, at the Santa Fe Art Institute uh, in New Mexico, uh, where I came in and began to approach how, and when I was talking about this idea of the labor, obviously takes me back to when I came into this country, and uh, and specifically my mom working in the uh, illegal garment industry uh, with other laborers. And uh, and so I kind of went into that direction to go through since that was my surroundings uh, growing up, and that was my community. It was an immigrant uh, labor community, uh, uh, but and our family lived in uh, African American Black neighborhood on the north side of uh, Pasadena. At that time, it's one of those uh, one of those small pockets. Uh, I was under-resourced uh, right there next to the projects in the King's Manor. Um, and so I'm just going to show a little bit of uh, how my work tends to go into two-dimensional painting and drawing and, and still uh, have, uh, it's multidisciplinary. So it, it can go, it also has a tendency to go into three-dimensional work, installation work as well. Um, so a lot of my work will, uh, specifically in here, uh, there was a lot of references. I'm at the pause for a second. Is that okay? Are we good, Josh? I cannot hear you. Here we go. So I'm going to share my screen now, uh, which is going to be uh, a little bit of uh, some of the work that I recently did last year at the, at the, at a residency at the Santa Fe Art Institute last year on labor. And uh, so when, when, when I, when I got there, what I started focusing on was more of uh, uh, using my mother's experience as a, as a, garment worker in the illegal garment industry here in Los Angeles. And um, and so when she worked there, uh, you know, uh, what they did is they, they she she sewed. So what it was, was that they would get a piece of material, kind of fabric, kind of like my shirt. And um, and she might have to have uh, maybe attach this collar. You know, if you can see me on the right-hand corner um, and maybe attach it to the rest of the shirt. Uh, and, that would be considered a piece and it would have these tags on it. And what she would do is she would rip one of those tags off and, and, uh, and then she would sign the other ones, right? As a documentation that she, she was the last person to work on this piece of like the collar 
uh, attached to the shirt. And then she would hold on to these tickets. Uh, and um, with these tickets, uh, by the end of the week, she would grab them and she would she would sew them, collect them, put them in chronological order, and then sew them onto a, a sheet of uh, line paper. And then she would make her calculations because each ticket had a value to it, whether it was five cents, 25 cents, depending on, on, on the, how complicated the stitching was. And so um, uh, that's what she turned in at the end of the week. And that uh, e uh, equated how much she would get paid, right? Uh, and so, um, so I went back to that idea. And so I started uh, uh, kind of my own way uh, through the use of paint uh, on paper, just beginning to explore these ideas and concepts of numbers, right? And documentations of uh, worth and value, right? And um, all this through this, uh, this idea of uh, the immigrant experience, right? And the reason why we emigrate uh, out here. Um, and uh, so you would also get all these, uh, uh, you get these garments from uh, very well-known uh, labels, right? Because perhaps they didn't meet their quota in the factory. So usually what they do is then they uh, kind of like hire somebody to perhaps send it out to these small little uh, uh, illegal garment industry so they can finish the job so they can get everything on time and pay it at a cheap value, the labor. It's something that's not really uh, noted here in the US, but that's definitely something that happens. Um, let me go back here to give you another idea. Uh, so I began exploring these just through on paper during that residency, right? Uh, And uh, let me see. All with this idea of coming into uh, touch on these ideas of labor and uh, and the immigrants um, uh, or the visitors uh, or migrant workers, um, uh, just the dream, right? Or that wish of just wanting a better life, right? Uh, and, and this is me just playing around with these ideas of uh, with these uh, wishbones, right, from the neck of chickens and turkeys and all that, right, and um, and atta attaching to it my own just very straightforward uh, representation of um, of, uh, of, uh, of 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 uh, I guess you would say of of race in a new world, right, or. Uh, and and just the many uh, different um, facets that um that uh, people who migrate over have to face, right? Issues of dealing with class, of uh, racism. Uh, uh, so just exploring those topics, right? Right. Um, playing with this idea of uh, I remembering going into the factories and just smelling the grease, right? From the from the these industrial uh, machines, right? That are really like really heavy, uh, uh, I guess you would say sewing machines that it's not the ones that you just buy at a normal store, right? That your grandma has, right? Uh, uh, and so I remember the colors of the grease being like this, uh, this, uh, these like dark grayish greens and browns, right? And so I think with the paint, I began to exploring those ideas, uh, of, that feeling of the grease, right? Um, and again, uh, working with this uh, visual, right? Uh, or of this narrative, American narrative, right? Of how, of how we can uh, uh, do this work, we can succeed, right? Um, and so this, these, that's the visual, right? That's what the laborer talks about, right? Uh, I remember conversations with my mom and her friends, and it was always about getting ahead and the reason they're here, right? And they spent the whole day and time in these factories or working in construction or in, um, or in uh, landscaping or, or whatever it would be. Right, and just again, playing with these ideas that just kind of deal with these, like listening to all these, uh, everyone's stories as to why they're here and, what they want to attain, right? Why they left their country, right? War torn, 
country. There's people from Salvador uh, fleeing the war at that time. There are people from China um, uh, fleeing um, uh, communism at, at that time. And you had people from Mexico just uh, either because of, uh, uh, of some form of terrorism that was happening over there, just hardship financially, right? And what pushes someone to leave their country, right? And again, exploring these ideas of um, of iron and metal, and and um, uh, and this is, for example, uh, it's um, it's a uh, it's a drain, right? And uh, metal, and uh, and it's painted with grease, right? So again, and in my work, I use a lot of lines that um, that stem from. Uh, the pattern of uh, of drawing, you know, when you first learn how to write your name when you were a kid, right? Again, just trying to create these dialogues, right? Of uh, of coming into a place where uh, you know you're just trying to infuse some type of American narrative, right, into yourself, right, or trying to adapt yourself to a new place, uh, uh, leaving your cultural place or family uh, origins, and then having to uh, move, right? And kind of disattach yourself from that, right? Uh, and come on over to a new place, and then just trying to fit in, right? And trying to take in, right? And uh, people are telling you that you need to change your name, right, to adapt, um, uh, start looking at yourself, not necessarily uh, uh, where you're from, like in the sense of like nationally or nationally, your nationality, right? It was more and now it became more about uh, what, um, where does your color of your skin fit you in, right? And this whole infusion, right, then for myself having to learn a new dialogue, uh, a new language, uh, and um, again, it's just uh, exploring these different ideas and concepts, right? Um, how do you ingest or inject these uh, these uh, ideas of identity? Right, and this. And for me, it's again just exploring these different ways that um, it's a very almost uh, the more you grow up in a new place, the the more probability of especially as time goes by and generations go by, your identity begins to erase, right, and take and uh, take on a new one, right. So it's almost this idea like that. So exploring those ideas. So I want to show a little bit of this because that's where my work was kind of, was at. And uh, when this was happening, and I'm going to stop share for a second, um, so I can go back and show you something. I'll share a different screen for you. Uh, and this is a different file, and it has a lot of stuff mixed in. So I'm going to pull and grab because I was having some difficulties with these computers. Um, and during this time, uh, what ended up happening was, uh, you know this idea with Ukraine began to happen, right? And so we began to see, right? Can you see that okay? Um, no, could you click on it? I have, you should be able to see, is it an image of- They're very small, they're, they're very, tiny. Oh, let me see, let me stop sharing. Let me try it again. My apologies. All you have to do is click on those if you'd like. They they could open up. I shared this screen. Mm -hmm. And then if I go like this, nothing. No. Another thing you can do um, up top, there's a box in the center with four squares in the center. If you click click on that. Yes. Now uh, click on that for a second. Now click on as gallery and that will be helpful. 
How's that? Yes. Perfect. Can you see this? All right. So, you know, this, uh, um, we started getting the reports of, uh, I remember that what Russia was uh, sending strike units over to Ukraine. And uh, so I began to just grab my camera and begin to document that. Right. And I was doing that throughout the evening and throughout the day. And um, so I was just documenting, right? And I just couldn't, uh, it was interesting to see, again, these people who had already left their country and created their own, um, uh, who already uh, had left their place of origins and then began to create something new somewhere else which eventually turned out to be Ukraine. And um, now being, uh, I guess you say, derooted, right? Uh, people having to flee. Um, and uh, and it was just right there at, during that time. So I found that to be very, very interesting. Um, and because of that, then the only way I could respond to it was through through sketching, right? Like I normally do, right? Um, can you see that okay? Yes. See. Okay. Using um uh different variations of uh gray tones, right? To perhaps gesture or to really uh show a gratitude in what was happening, right? And all I, the way I could only process was just through lines and and sketching. Um, Cross hatching, um, and again, these are uh, these symbols of uh, of um, the lines of uh, of how um, dialogues uh, occur when you first begin to write your name. You know, they began to transpire into it. They began to come out into the drawings themselves, right? Just. I, I think just pieces of these images that I was watching just coming coming through and I was just letting them happen. You know, uh, I didn't have any intention when I began to draw uh, what I was going to draw about. I just, I think I was just responding. That's all it was, just responses. Right. Again, just playing around with these ideas. Um, And then um, let me stop sharing for a second. So then uh, drawing and sketching uh, and just trying to take this in. And as I was watching and I had, you know, living in Chicago for a while, uh, a lot of, because it's such a small city and it's the neighborhoods, it's it's so diverse with the, with with neighborhoods that, um, and the city's so small that everything's pretty like close to each other, and um, and uh, and just living there, going to the going to to SAIC. Uh, I also had a lot of friends that were Ukrainian, right? I had friends that were Russian that were Ukrainian. I had friends that were from India, friends that were uh, from Italy, and because you have all those neighborhoods there, right? So um, uh, I think it 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 kind of got me a little bit in that sense. Um. So, you know, obviously the questions are that I began to occur. Like, okay, so why is this? Why am I? Obviously, I'm interested in this, right? Uh, part of what uh, feeds into my work is is uh, why is it the culture the way it is in that demographic or geographic location um, based on its past, right? Uh, what happened before, and why is it the way it is now? And so now, all of a sudden, seeing this, uh, people being dislocated right um when you and i josh began to to talk and especially during this time that this uh this mentorship award kind of came in uh grant um you know i started it somehow started touching on these ideas of displacements of people uh of specifically more into my own personal life, right? With my family and my community, right? Where uh, 
we left right a place of origins and then we come into a new environment and we're constantly we're in this flux right and there's a saying uh that they say in spanish que ni de aquí, ni de allá, right which neither of here or there right which is very common a lot of people use it and um because it's kind of like you're you feel like you're in flux because you're constantly trying to land somewhere right and you're trying to be a part of that community right or of that neighborhood or that place right and sometimes uh with you just trying to survive right uh in a new environment right comes these pressures of having to assimilate right uh and um but you know but also i keep thinking this idea of just being in flux and trying to latch on and hold on to something right uh, trying to root yourself in a new place, right? Uh, you don't know how long you're going to be here for, right? Uh, my mother's plan was to come over by herself uh, and um, and maybe be here for six months. Her sisters and her family told her, leave the kids behind or else you're never going to go back, right? Uh, so just leave them behind. And that was the plan. I mean, I think a few days before she said, I can't leave my kids. Because they told her, if you take your kids, you might not come back. Then. So um, when she got over here, uh, she found out the school was free or whether you have to pay after a certain age. And so, she, and as a single mother, she was like, well, my kids get a free education. They can learn English, right? And everyone who comes over, you know, always, it's the plan is to always uh, save up enough money to go back, right? And no one knows how long they're here for. So there's never this, like, we're moving over there permanently, Right. Unless, and I can only say, and I can only say based on our experience, right? Because in some places, they leave with the intention of leaving and never going back. And so I don't want to speak for other people's uh, uh, migrant uh, transitions, right? And so, um, so I think, again, I think I start finding these, uh, these uh, connections, right? Between uh, people, uh, not wanting to leave or wanting to anchor in somewhere, uh, trying to root, trying to always find a place where uh, they're not just accepted, but where uh, they can live, right? And it's always, there's always been these uh, these instances throughout our lives where, uh, and especially in my life and with my family's life, where it's, we've seen a lot of, uh, these reminders, right? That it's uh, that you can't completely, uh, I guess you say, build a foundation here, right? Um, uh, whether it's uh, you know through your skin color, right? Uh, uh, ethnically, right? Or uh, or it's uh, through class systems, right? Of of uh, of money, right? Uh, economic wealth, I guess you would say, um, education, right? Um, People will see me, uh, and uh, based on how light I am, they will just assume sometimes that, that I'm not even Mexican, right? Until they hear the name Juan Carlos, and then all of a sudden, it's interesting that it changes, right? And uh, so there's always these reminders, right, of how you're not here, or you're not from Mexico, uh, or if you, or from your own uh, um, uh from people from Mexico, right? And I'm talking about my experience sometimes with some, it's like, well, you were raised over there, so now you're from over there. So now you don't have an attachment to here, right? Or uh, you're Americanized, so, you know, that's that, right? Or, uh, and so growing up, you start getting all these reminders that kind of keep you from wanting to, from keep you from, again, cementing yourself somewhere, right? And moving to Chicago and then coming back over here and then starting over again in a certain way and having to take on, uh, uh, especially during the quarantine, move, move back here in 2019, uh, having to uh, as quarantine lifted. Uh, and since I'm a teaching artist in schools and in different neighborhoods, a lot of that slowed down. So having to find work just to keep uh, me going by any means, right? Um, uh, pay my rent or whatever it be. And so I find myself, uh, again, uh, being an educator uh, and at the same time being a laborer, right? Through many different ways. So it brings back all these uh, 
things of uh, being a laborer again. But um, that idea, and I'll share my screen, screen again, uh, it began to, um, let me see here, oh, here we are. Right, these ideas, uh, it reminded, it, it, never, it made these uh, associations, right, to, right, these concrete structures, right, uh, where people have built something or continue to build uh, and being derooted, right, and trying to latch on. That's how I saw uh, the Ukrainian folks, right, uh, being derooted and trying to like just figure out a way to not let go of uh, of their country, and um, and again, just the idea of of anchoring oneself. Uh, that came, I would use these ideas of hooks, which I've used many times in my drawings, but somehow, uh, again, through that, I began to find uh, those uh, threads and, and, uh, and I guess you would say forms of, uh, of um, similarities between that experience, not necessarily just, just of um, individual trying to anchor themselves somewhere. Uh, which led to just, again, been painting and exploring and, uh, and seeing how that's gonna fit in to all of this, right? So again, this idea of uh, using, these are just sketches on wood uh, with uh, uh, acrylic paint on wood. Uh, and then it has that, obvious, uh, it has this understructure of layers of paint. And then I, come up, I came back on there with these muted uh, green grease types of colors, right? Uh, again, uh, perhaps having to do with, again, touching on uh, my mother's uh, work in the, in the factories. And then painting, and then peeling the paint and cutting it and shaping it and forming it to, you know, kind of like mimic windows, I guess you would say, as you see here. Again, uh, it seems like it's stemming from those sketches, right? That stems from uh, those images, uh, the bombing of Ukraine. And again, infusing, kind of tying itself to, again, this idea of the laborer and the immigrant and that experience of coming over to the States. Uh, but again, it's, it's this, uh, it's just, it's this uh, idea of uh, individuals uh, in flux, just trying to latch onto something, right? Identity, uh, culture, uh, uh, beginnings, right? Uh, having to do with uh, existence and uh, I don't like to use the word legacy, but something that has to do with uh, uh, generational, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why people come over here in the first place, same reason why people uh, fight to stay in a place, right? In a location or try to uh, integrate themselves in community or a neighborhood, right? Uh, especially when they uh, have left their own, right? Behind, right? And and I think, uh, so I mean, as you can see, these are all sketches, right? And, uh, and so I think that's when this, uh, these past few months, kind of like that's kind of where I've been going back and forth, right? So I've been in the studio for a bit and then not, for long periods of time and just mostly in dialogue uh talking with you josh about it and then also in my head right i'm uh, trying to figure out well, why is this why you know i'm doing this work on labor and then we went into into this uh what's happening in a different part of the world and then all of a sudden starting to find uh again through the 
creative art making process these these connections right uh absolutely interesting so, i mean absolutely can i chime in here it's kind of interesting um we've had this conversation before but i mean today as and i was as planning i'm thinking about this idea as uh this concept of impulse the impulse for action or movement and ultimately whatever your story is whatever your our backgrounds are we all are trying to find this place of establishing roots of establishing lives of meaning and leaving some sort of legacy or something for for a future okay mm -hmm. or connecting to our culture who we are as people as as individuals so um i didn't mean to cut you off i wanted to throw that in mm -hmm. and i I find it fascinating that just through the world of current events, you started talking about Ukraine. Because if we go back in my family, I mean, I'm not from from Mexico. I'm not from Latin America at all. Um, but um, my father's family comes from a, a little town southwest of um, live in Ukraine. But when my family lived there, um, it was it was called um, Galicia, so we were Galicianers, and so I think in like the 1880s or so, um, we had to flee. There was the pogroms, there was the discrimination, um, not dealing with you know a different type of discrimination. You know, it's not you know you know ethnic. You know, I, I'm a Jewish, so I mean that that came from that, um, but. Um, so it's interesting to hear that you're tying in or you're finding a, a connection between what's happening now in this place where my family was, <laughs> you know, 150 years ago or whatever. So, so there's, you know, what's been so exciting to the, to the people we're, we're making this documentation for time and time again, throughout these, these, this, uh, these past several months there's been this ebb and flow and there's this these these connections um be, that juan carlos and i have been drawing it's been really a fascinating um discovery and experience i think that's really kind of enriched and made us really question um go deeper into our work and um anyhow so i'm i'm digressing please continue i don't know no i mean that's where I'm at still with this, obviously, is still um, in progress, the work. Um, and it just gets me a little more exciting as to where it's going, because now it's kind of like these. Now I'm just excited to get back in the studio and just start messing around with material. Right. Excellent. And, excellent. And as you can hear, you know, it's um, uh, I don't have the statement polished up and I don't have the vocabulary polished up because this is raw this this whole dialogue this whole process which is what i love about uh being able to document this where it's at right now you know um but uh you know i'm now going to leave it take put it to you right okay and, great uh, and yeah um, thank you and i'm going to chime in it's so funny and I'm, I'm this is an informal thing we're talking about um and you know what anyhow i'm just going to jump right in and share um this is something did i show you these no okay this is what I find fascinating, and this kind of ties in to connections between your family and my family. Oh, yes. This is a pair of fabric shears. Yes. And this is a piece of cheesecloth. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to reclaim. Here we go. I'm, I'm not the host again. This is cheesecloth that my great-grandfather tied on. So my great grandfather tied this on probably about 100 to 110 years ago, and this fabric, this has all been here. So here's a connection because your mother worked in the garment industry. Mm -hmm. My great grandfather, as it turned out, um, when my father's family, when some of my father's family, their ancestors, came over from Lithuania, we all settled in. They settled in New York. And I'm going to pull this briefly up on my phone. Um, they found out where they lived in New York. And one of right up there where there's that arrow. Mm -hmm. Right up there. Yeah. Any arrow. 
They lived there. And my ancestor um, was, he was a peddler. He sold garments on the street. And then, you know, and then they, they did, someone in my family did some research. So this was like the first marriage contract, a marriage license from the city of New York. In November 9th, um, 1888, it was signed. And I remember finding this on Facebook on November 9th, 2023. It was mm-hmm. like it was like 100, what was it, 134-year anniversary of my of my ancestors. And so it's very curious to me to find all of these records to see that, you know, again, we're looking for residue and documentation and trying to make make a mark but so i guess it was my great grandfather was a peddler then my wait was my great great grandfather was a peddler then my this is my great grandfather's cutting shears my grandfather was a tool and die maker and uh, and then my father was a graphic designer and i'm an artist and educator so it's all about looking and recognizing uh, materials and an engagement with materials and the potential that lies within and the transformation of the materials, all different ways through different generations. Mm -hmm. And then if we go back, like if I'm not very religious, but like my family, we would be Levites. And traditionally the Levites were the attendants in the temple like thousands of years ago. And they would, we would be preparing the ritual objects for ceremonies and whatnot we would be like the assistants to like the high priests, so to mm. speak. So it's kind of interesting to see that there's a sense of a connection, I think, in there, un, un, unintended or unrealized. But as you're talking, I'm like, oh, man, I want to pull pull this up and share this with you because I think it's kind of cool. Awesome. So well, thank you very much. I think that's fascinating. Um, appreciate the opportunity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share a couple of things here let me uh, share the screen um let me go here i'm gonna pull up i'm gonna pull up a little present um here we go pull this up my busy desktop and as i'm doing this um let's see what i i i had a statement you know what i'm gonna go ahead and i'll play this first um you know what first some words first some words and i'll share this this was a, a general statement um that i had about a specific body of work um something to maybe think about as you peruse see my images um looking to the past as a means to move forward fragmented recollections often initiate my dialogue with materials uh, the crack in the driveway, uh, cytoxin slowly dripping into my arm, hair on my pillow, a burnt hole through paper, the overlooked and insignificant. Nature acts, and we embed those actions with meaning. Residual communi- uh, accumulations of my small repeated gestures that once gave thought form and recorded my journey of becoming cancer free now give. Uh, the fleeting commodity of time palpability, opening a door, scratching my nose, an elevator ride, a sneeze, the overlooked cough, insignificant rituals that we once took for granted are now uh, deliberated over as if they're monumental decisions of life and death. Small, simple, repeated gestures everywhere must be exercised with great care working with fire and paper in my ritual practice, the thousands of individual residual marks draw attention, um, draw as much attention to absence as to what is present. Uh, we have been, um, I wrote this during, obviously during the pandemic, uh, we've become awakened to see our interconnectedness, our hand in this moment. We are acutely aware of the consequences of our immediate individual actions have on, as, as they accumulate and profoundly affect humanity. Employing the simple 
gesture of burning holes through the surface of the picture plane challenges the physical integrity of paper and heightens the tension and awareness of the delicate edge between form and emptiness, making fragile more fragile and evident the accumulative impact the small, subtle, incremental change can have on the whole. So that's just a, a general statement I, I, I've had for a while. I was writing this during, uh, during the pandemic. And what I thought I would do is I would share, I'm just going to let this play out, um, a series of images. Um, this is work in no chronological order. Mm -hmm. I'll just let this play out. So here's, this was just a range of work. Thank you for taking a look. Um, I just wanted to, uh, it's kind of some observations. Um, again, it's clearly, I'm interested in rep repetition formally, um, small repeated gestures, simple gestures that, that anyone can do over an obsessive period of time, whether it be in this piece, board, 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 I was bored. So I took a board and I bored holes through it exploring this idea of of accumulation and density and whether this the sound board that i'm making with my body and repeating this board and at once it's it's a feeling it's an object and it's a gesture so you know it's a matter of perspective um this piece uh sanam which is a uh, nine feet by 18 feet it's um burnt linen uh, created for an exhibition in uh, Bangkok Ministry of Culture. Um, again, this idea of burning, but burning with that I've been doing or creating a hole. I'm seeing these holes or these apertures or these windows in the blown out buildings of your sketches, uh, Juan Carlos. But here I was, I made this piece referring to landscape and uh, the abysmal, obliterated landscape looking at destruction and yet purification at the same time through burning you know this i made this during the california landscapes um i'm also noting again literally collecting and finding materials wherever i am and incorporating them into the work uh, these organic lotus and plant elements are found in nakon in nakon sawan um, where I made this piece this, in 2020. Uh, this was the first week of February 2020. Um, you see, I incorporated seven face masks as well. So that's the first time I I used face masks. Um, the work was almost like a, a calendar, uh, a record of my life, me being in a particular place, 
in a particular time. Um, strange to me, I'll share this, um, looking at the movement, and I'm really getting caught up in the sense of movement of line. And, and we talked about this idea of impulse and direction. And I thought between these two pieces, there's a vis some visual connections that I didn't reference before that I wasn't aware of. Um, this is um, experimented with NFTs. So I this was a digital collage um, where I'm taking photographs and um, of my work, of my two-dimensional work, um, not well, of my real physical work. And my physical work is being a prop for something else. Again, taking something real in the physical world and photographing it, burning it, compressing it down into another type of object. Um, this again here, the sense, you know, I'm seeing connections in the movement here, capturing in stone. Uh, this is sliced stone, a ceramic form. This is another ceramic form where I'm using how can a line create a form when can something so insignificant become insurmountable this idea of making a tablet um a palimpsest is drawing surface thinking again about as we talked about in our proposal dealing with marginality i mean our, my intersection you know being um uh, being jewish being gay this whole idea of like you're you're not really part of it, but you're on the periphery or the ornamentation. Um, in a sense, you're on the surface, scanning the surface of the form. And here's a series of other blocks. This is strata. These are all coil built forms that I draw into with objects, either the corner of a piece of wood that I slam it into the form or a knife. Uh, and then here's some, again, here I'm, I'm drawing that line with a brush. It's the same idea, similar idea, I think, in these as these, which I never, until preparing for this presentation, it's so obvious, but I never formally thought of that. So I feel like I'm, I have some under... <laughs> Underlying thing I'm really exploring. I'm thinking of this like the idea of a willow. Again, what's hiding, what's revealing, the passage of time and accumulation. Similar ideas. Duality and fracture, but yet codependence. Some more collage work. And I thought this drew an interesting parallel between here, this piece, where I'm incorporating, um, again, photographs of some two-dimensional work. But you can see here, there's some indication of um, really mining the, the land, not only observed landscape, ex, ex, the external observed landscape, but yet the landscape within my body. These are um, x-rays of my, my spine. Again, here's some more work, and you can see all of this is burnt paper as well. There's some burnt, burnt paper elements here as well. And I'm scaling up. I started baking some of these small seven by eight inches, and this is like, you know, 22 by 30 inches or so, so more, far more substantial in scale. Back to this. Again, that repeated, that obsessive vertical line or that, you know, the line work and kind of tying it down. So ever present. This again here is my spine. Um, right about here is where um, uh, a cancer tumor disintegrated three fourths of my L1 vertebrae. And miraculously, my vertebrae grew back. I don't know how how it did, <laughs> and I can walk again, and um, I've be since become cancer free. But since my cancer experience, I'm really thinking a lot about the limitations of time. That's how I'm talking about 
you know, it's time is palpable, time is fleeting, and um, you know, <laughs> move, fight or flight, live, live your life, do what you want to do. Um, and um, this, um, what did I, I had? I'm not big on titles, but I had, I titled this piece something along the lines of um, someday um, this all will, will end. Um, thinking about and here again i'm not drawing paper but i'm um, drawing by making marks within the surface of this clay slab i've more and more been using ceramics not as the creation of a final vessel but more as a marker uh, more as a prop within a piece um finding simple and connection not only to my heritage but uh, to myself to my place and time but also to myself as being i'm alive um this is um my hand is in the mountains the mountain is in my hands i this is part of a series i worked began about five years ago where i'm taking ceramic shards that i've constructed that i've made again look if we look at the formal construction of them they're all they're constructed in a similar way and I'm photographing them and in different places around the world, part of an ongoing series. This was photographed, I think, at one of the rest stop areas on the way to Phoenix to my parents' house. Um, and this you might recognize as being Desert Hot Springs. Um, um, I was working there. This is a relatively a new piece. Um, it's unfired clay. Um, I am, I am mountain. I'm titling this piece, um, and this is part of part of that series. Um, I think like a cousin or companion piece to that. Um, my hand is in the mountain. The mountain is in my hand, and um, I'm making it for um, part of a presentation. I will be presenting in. Um, in February 2023, in about a month or two, in Bangkok, Thailand, I've been invited to work in clay in a workshop and take part in, um, and it's an international workshop and group exhibition. Mm -hmm. And I'm the, the only artist from the United States who was invited to be working in clay. So I quite literally wanted to make impressions of the American West, literal impressions, using, again, tools that I find in this particular spot. Um, and I'm going to be bisking these pieces here and taking them. Um, we're doing a large um, raku firing. So again, and then here's more work. Again, where I've taken my ceramic shards here. Um, again, playing around with this idea of digital collage. Um, when I was um, in bed at Cedar Sinai and for the bulk of 2019, um, my stu my cell phone became my studio. So I'm using very simple collage like apps on my phone to, and I was mining my my phone for images. And uh, this is how the, these works came about. Um, this is another piece start in about 19 1997 i started burning paper and so again so juan carlos this idea of the whole the aperture you know i'm almost thinking of like in japanese they say iseki or excavation sites mm -hmm. this is a drawing taking something beautiful and simple and overlooked and um, mining it making it even more fragile so this is um burnt paper with incense and this is a coffee filter so i begin to draw on it with ink and then i'm burning it as well and then my process of making these pieces um with this whole Instagram, online, social media, everyone wants to see how you make your work. <laughs> I started making these drawings and turning, well, a drawing will be a performance. And I thought this was just uh, an interesting little moment with, with light 
and the candle and in my studio shot like this could be an artwork or a documentation of this this piece so i wanted to share that always inspired by textiles mm -hmm. um, i didn't share this with a presentation i spent about three years in 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 japan um in the mid 90s um teaching and exploring excavation sites and ceramic vill uh, villages um i'm big um big well i'm a huge fan i love obsessed with uh, japanese uh aesthetics uh, antiques whatnot so this paint indigo paint was from a japanese boro textile and this is uh an eight foot by six foot um, mural painted directly on the wall in a, in a in a residence, and here's some again some gestural drawings. Again, very just I think they're all about response. I think about this work, and this is kind of the space that I'm in, and we've been having these really interesting dialogues these intellectual dialogues and we're trying to figure out well what is our work work about and then I'm, i've been pausing and i've been thinking you know what my work really is not led by the intellect you know it's 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 there is first it's a response you know as i say nature acts and then i bring meaning into it or i there's an action and then i counteract and then there's back and forth so there's a, a sense of dialogue a sense of reciprocity i think happening but um, but for me to sit down and, oh, I'm going to make a piece of art and this is what it's going to be about. And like my work's not, I mean, I love work that's like that. It's fascinating, but I don't think that's that's the type of work that I create. Um, so, but I'm looking through and I'm really surprised, although there is a range of materials and medium, I'm this process, this dialogue and this mentorship and what I've learned from you, this is really helping me to see connections and give me a sense of direction in my work um, that I, I that I wasn't um, wasn't really privy to before I didn't quite get it. Um, I don't know. So that was my introduction. <laughs> and yes, <laughs> I, since we are both. And it's so funny. I'm just going to say this to the group. If you all, uh, thank you for watching so far. We were both thinking, oh, we'll both introduce our work for five minutes. And then yeah. we'll, <laughs> here we are, like, what, going on two hours? Yeah, we're like, well, five minutes, you take it, five minutes, I take it. And then exactly. we'll go to this and then we'll take off. And then, so, yeah. yeah, so this is great. I think this is really fruitful. Um, so where where do we, what do we want to talk about now? Let me ask you. I mean, I think you were, you kind of, I mean, I think we, we could just have a little bit of open dialogue. Doesn't necessarily, let's see if it goes, I mean. Okay. I'm going to respond a little bit to my work, you know, and um, uh, I think it was um, like in your work, you know, just like one of the things that we ended up um, just right now, what you just mentioned, right? It's like we were both responding, right? And then, and try not to have, not trying not to put any limitations or expectation that what is what's going to happen right from the start making process right it's just can i just sit down and use my body to make markings right and 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 move the material around right and um and if i find some type of connection to something then it will happen or not right and usually what we end up finding out is ends up actually having to do with a lot of things that's happening in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it actually ends up falling into these little threads of things that maybe our work is about or things that we're exploring, right? But we find that just by giving us ourselves that um, that freedom or, uh, or, or opportunity to just, yeah, freely explore, I guess you would say. Yeah. And you know, the whole intention is just to make marks, whether it's with pencil or with paint or... Uh, you know, pushing into a material or not, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, this afternoon, I wrote a little tangent, a little idea, whatever. Can I share it with you? Yeah, go ahead. I was thinking about this. Um, when did you write it? What? I'm sorry? When did you write it? I wrote it this, I wrote it this afternoon. 
I think. Or, you know, I'm getting, honestly, I'm getting my days a little bit blurred this afternoon. I might have wrote it yet yesterday afternoon. I can't remember. But um, I wanted to kind of, I was thinking back to our initial, part of our initial concept. We're saying as contemporary artists, we explore concepts of marginality. And in that, we, you know, we acknowledge that our discourses focus on a shared common ground and experiences as being members of overlapping intersectional minority communities. But I'm thinking about, I've, I'm trying, why do I intentionally focus about marginality? I think it, what it is, is in my work, am I exploring concepts of marginality or am I exploring work from the position of being marginal. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's something, but anyhow, this is what I wrote. Um, and I'm gonna cover this view here. Um, you know, I could share this, but I'll just read it. Why not? Um, yeah. taking, uh, taking the long view, um, everything's, and if this is not, you know, this is just a sketch, um, extemporaneous writing. Taking the long view, everything seems to be um, autobiographical. I'm creating an ongoing record that I exist and that I exist in a particular place and time. The, the, uh, the, the residue of the work, which is often constructed with materials and tools that I found on site, it's um, a manifestation of thoughts and feelings um, as they relate to my observations of places and often um, natural landscapes. Mm -hmm. And also those within my body. That's the content. Um, it's not a literal narrative with representational uh, biographical imagery, um, mm -hmm. but it's one that is more open ended and ambiguous. Uh, ambiguous. Um, it's speaking and I'm, that way I'm, I'm trying to say it's it's speaking to the, the shared universal, ex, you know, human condition, so to speak. Uh, frequently, the content is oriented or anchored um, to the past. Um, it's either, and that could be something that's recently happened in the past or something that goes like further back in time mm -hmm. that could be informed by like my family history, you know, the texture of this cheesecloth that my great grandfather put on this, you know, the loop of this cutting shears that he used every day for his entire career. You know, who knows that? Or, um, the response could be to something like a geographical event that uh, might have happened over millennium. Uh, the, resi uh, the residual mark from the gesture of the body rather than the depiction of the human body itself. In this way, it could speak to a wider audience of our, of our shared um, uh, experiences of being human. And I'm doing that rather than, you know, talking specifically about my my experience but something that's more relatable hopefully to everyone because we are all human and i think as particularly as as you were showing in your work and your stories of where your interests are um you know the places and you know this you know may they may have been different but there's a lot of shared commonality in that it's it's and funny i I imagine like, you know, your mother and then my great grandfather, like they're doing the same thing. I could see yeah, them really? like, work, working in the same space. Yeah. Well, that's one of some of the similarities, right? In, in our art making process, right? Is that um, uh, whatever it is that we're working on, it, we're looking at as a, we're creating these landscapes, right? It's not right. like a particular object, right? It's usually uh, even the, pieces of clay that you worked on, right? And that you marked, uh, it becomes a landscape almost, right? Mm -hmm. Or even just the photographs that you are taking of yourself within uh, an environment, whether it's a mountain in the back and you're holding uh, a piece of clay, right? You you have become part of that landscape, right? Even if it's your hand, it's not about your hand in the space. It's about just the whole thing working together, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, um, and I think those are some similarity in our approach to our work. Yeah. Right? And it's all and it's all initially pushed through uh uh gestural response, physical material, whatever it be, right? And Absolutely. then 
And then later on, it, we will look at to see how it fits within uh, the space that began to form itself in, right? Which I think it's kind of interesting, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, those are like, all of that started happening, right? As we were, as we're talking, right? And as we were uh, meeting, uh, meeting almost weekly at one point, right? And uh, absolutely having these conversations or sharing about things that we're exploring, right? And uh, well, not necessarily with an intention of what it was going to look like, just go ahead. Well, even if not in meeting weekly in person, we're always like texting back and forth. Yeah. And but yeah, I just wanted to say this. This is a piece. This is again, these are those same pieces of clay, mm -hmm. but a different piece. Mm -hmm. And I just posted this on my Instagram. I can I see if I can find it. Yeah, it's not coming in. Come on. Feel <laughs> this. Anyhow. So this is. My hand is in the mountain. The mountain is my hand, Mount Vesuvius. So I'm I'm between the two shards of clay is, is Mount Vesuvius in yeah. Sorrento, in Naples, Italy. So it's again that, you know, it's it's the same, but it's different. You know. And that was from 2019. Anyhow. When um I right know. I know you're getting also ready for this for the exhibition in Thailand, right? Um, what? Uh, anything else you have to share about this? Well, I'm I'm just so excited. Just this whole thing. My life has just gone through so much transformation, and you, sir, are a part of it. You've definitely given. I mean, I guess beating cancer had a lot to do with getting the courage to do it, but you gave me a lot of uh, encouragement and perspective and you're part of the impetus, I guess I, I'm going <laughs> to, that I, um, I moved on from full-time teaching. I stepped down. Um, it was, it was time and um, I'm going to be making um, work as a full-time artist. I've been invited to take part in this workshop mm -hmm. and um in at a university called Po Chung uh, Academy of Art, I think it's one of uh, one of Bangkok's oldest art schools, I believe. Okay. There's going to be a thing about twenty five artists working in clay, and another eighty artists working in, I think, painting, printmaking, and sculpture. And then there'll be an exhibition. And then I'm going to be going to uh, uh, southern Thailand for. I don't know for how long, but I'm going to be over there for two months. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be making work there. Um, we're dealing with the, the realities, the economic realities of Los Angeles, where I can't, um, I can't produce my work here. Um, so I'm taking the opportunity to be making my work abroad and then bringing my work back. Um, and uh, I'm going to be going to... Uh, uh, a number of different cities, around, not only in Songkla, but maybe Nakhon Suan and Chiang Mai, um, and be making work there. Yeah, and, you know, um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, um, no worries. I don't know where my life's going right now. So it's kind of exciting. I mean, it's going to a very exciting place, right? I mean, I mean, throughout this process, we've been communicating and talk about, about what we're doing Uh and then uh, during this time, you know, it's the time you decided to, you know, just let go of your job, right? And uh, teaching. And and I was like, oh, my gosh, that's either a big plus or what happened here, right? Like, the, <laughs> um, but um, I mean, we, we found ourselves, you know, when we started talking and you and I began to hang out and talk about it and talk about it, look at each other's work. And we found ourselves in an interesting place right in our lives, right? We, right. you had just, uh, again, you know, was recently been cancer free. And then, and I had just uh, uh, moved from, made a big move from Chicago all the way right. here, life changing moving and having to, uh, in certain ways, start from scratch, right? Because once I was trying to make uh, connections here, we, we hit upon, you know, this pandemic, right? And then next year we were quarantined into, again, like you said, this is California, this is LA. So uh, 
our spaces are not that big, right? It's almost becoming like New York, right? Yeah. <laughs> Where it it affected our space of um, art making, right? Mm -hmm. Which in a sense kind of like challenged us to figure out how we're going to continue this creative process, right? And then yeah. now that there was a light at the end of the tunnel that this pandemic was kind of like, you know, the quarantine was, you know, kind of... Uh, restrictions got lifted and we were able to explain. I mean, it was interesting because we we're actually we were actually living like a block apart and we didn't even know it till yeah, that uh, well, that's funny. Well, you were a block away from me. Yeah. To the but I was I was in bed. I was going through you know 720 hours of chemo. But that was, that was, yeah. I was yeah. not one to socialize at that point yeah. in time. But you know now it's I'm in Hollywood. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, we'll Hollywood try to get Hollywood. we'll get you back down here to Long Beach. I love Long Beach. You know? Awesome. Yeah, we had to move because of uh, uh, issues that were building issues, uh, but um, it's okay where we're at right now. And uh, but again, just trying to figure out to continue making artwork to the extent and gravitude that you know it's to, you know. I think it's all about. I think ultimately. I'm thinking about what I'm going through and whatever this whole thing. It's about connection and finding connection and establishing yourself. It's about it's about love. It's about sharing and connection, and all of these things. Like I'm I'm in, like I when when I use I love I like saying this now. It's my new thing. It's like when I was a teacher. <laughs> no, most recently I was working with with young children, um, and um. But I'm like, what can I do is I can plant seeds and inspire them. So it's all about, you know, find something beautiful and mm -hmm. share it with other people. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think I'm a, I think talking about beauty and aesthetics are important. I know <laughs> beauty and contemporary art is. Eh. But well, I, and I, it'll I, be interesting to see how the work transpires itself. Right. Because we can't yeah. place that we were forced to not communicate with one another. Right, yeah, yeah. We're coming out of our apartments, we were in lockdown. Uh, you remember the eerie silence that was around, right? And then once, oh, yeah. once everything began to get lifted, and it's kind of like this, like this, like uh, how would you say, like tiptoeing outside of your house, right? <laughs> like, uh, and, uh, but yeah, I think this idea of like oh, this idea, this just um, wanting to connect to people, right? Uh, uh, just go, I think one of the things that a lot of people uh, realize or having a hard time trying to realize is like how important it is to just really be, uh, I think what got us through this is us being cemented in our own, um, mm -hmm. uh, in the things that made us who we are now, right? That right. became our foundation, right? Absolutely. That became, we had a, we had to go into what's, what we're rooted in because we didn't know whether we're going to have food tomorrow. We didn't know we're going to have toilet paper. We're not, we didn't know we're going to have this house anymore. Right. And mm -hmm. it became was like, okay, all of the things that I've been uh, dependent on to help take care of me, you know, that I thought I had worked really hard to put in place in case an emergency actually is not there. So uh, how do I uh, tap in and, Pull that strength and then I think for me it was very much about uh which I always had before right but now that the challenge really happened right and um uh, this idea of uh of uh of really looking into the things that make us who we are it's I think one of the things that was one of the experiences that even more so I mean because like I said I've been teaching for like like you like for 20 plus years uh -huh. but it, it it more so reinforced this idea of like you know that just being true to who I am and uh, and doing what I love to do creatively, you know, those things that make me who I am, right? Uh, through time, have become that strength, right? And mm -hmm. and uh, respect to ancestry and uh, those who fought for me to be here today, right? I mean, Absolutely. that became that inner foundation, right? And it's like, that's what pulled us through, right? I mean, that's right. We're still alive to, today, right? Uh, in the sense of like, 
if COVID didn't get you, a lot of people are still do, dealing with, a lot of us are still dealing with uh, uh, the the mental and emotional uh, trauma from that. You right? know, it's it's so funny. I was so worried about COVID. We, we both had it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was so worried about catching COVID and then I finally caught it and I'm like, oh, it lasted like three days. I'm like, oh, this was nothing compared to cancer. <laughs> like, wow. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> really? <laughs> You were vaccinated, right? Absolutely. And I got on the Paxlovid. Anyhow, because this is an informal, we are having an informal conversation. It is. Uh, And I just wanted to just throw this out. Um, We It's um, it's 8.50 and we started just after seven. So so do you think around the two hour mark, is that where you want to wrap it up? We're we're right about there already, right? So. Okay. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean. Again, this is a documentation of this ongoing dialogue. This is kind of like just a snapshot of where we're at right now, right? Um, yep. Nothing stopped, right? Uh, uh, one of the cool things about this is that it just gets me to a place where like, hmm, I think I'm gonna have to um, uh, maybe build some material or put things together, right? Um, structurally, maybe, uh, maybe perhaps, uh, mix some cement together and then maybe deconstruct parts of it. I don't know, but it's just going into this place where yeah. it's like, how can I create a space for myself to be able to do that? Right. Um, Absolutely. But again, uh, just keeping in mind that um, it's all about just, again, just like you with your work, trying to make markings, trying to gesture, trying to respond, just trying to, um, uh, I think this dialogue has been very, um, uh, very helpful. Um, I really appreciate your time, Josh. Oh, I, no problem. Uh, Likewise. Dialogues, um, the honest conversations. I mean, uh, as part of the reason I was like, well, Josh have kind of started this unintentionally, right? This dialogue. And it seems like it's already hard enough for artists or individuals to create a safe space uh, or a trusting space where a freeform dialogue exchange, you know, that happened. I mean, people pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to an art school for that to happen, right? And um, as we get older, it's hard to create yeah. the right? Especially between artists, right? Um, uh, so, yeah, I, th- I, th- it, I thought this, uh, this mentorship program just happened to fit appropriately yeah absolutely yeah. It, was, it was very helpful and it's funny we hadn't talked about that is is the you know our age where where we are contemporaries with each other yeah I think that is um you know at, we are both as i've kind of pointed out it's harder to make connections with other people as you get older so this mm-hmm. was this yeah. was very fruitful so. yeah interesting connections right something where uh you know we're not doing this because uh again our conversations began it's not because i'm trying to get something out of you or you're trying to get something out of me it's just uh-huh. the dialogue, right we're just absolutely two individuals just i don't know i mean just conversing and talking and creating very right? good yeah well i'm very thankful and again um i don't think we could end this without thinking uh, once again um, the the funders of this project, um, you know, thank you so much. Uh, we've both, as hopefully um, you have seen from our, our our recording here, that we have uh, really learned a lot from each other, and um, learned more about ourselves from ourselves. And uh, we're we're definitely going to keep this going. So this is just the beginning of um, great things to come. So thank you very much. And um, with, with with is there anything you else you'd like me to say? No, I mean, I would like you, to say you, before you said exactly what I was going to say. I just wanted to thank everyone uh, at um uh, at Latinx uh, Art Forum uh, for the opportunity to be able to do this. Um, we are both very grateful. Uh, and again, these conversations. Uh, I mean, you had to do a lot with that. Uh, 
with everything that's been going on within our creative lives right now. So we really appreciate this opportunity. And thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Thanks.